I gotta remember, there's like a, uh, there's like a, like a South Korean drama. It's like really popular right now and everybody's, everybody's talking about, what, what, what was it called? Are you an everyday nerd? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss the next episode. Yo, welcome to your Everyday Nerd. I'm your host, Zach Stetter. If you're new around here on Yin, we pull from every corner of nerd culture, talk about anything and everything that piques my interest. Welcome to our very first weekly roundup. We're gonna talk about the things I watched, read, played, listened to throughout the week, and hopefully you guys can let me know down in the comments what have you been up to in the past week as well. So without further ado, we got a lot of stuff. So let's just get to it. I've been on a little bit of an art house film kick. I know, I know, pretentious Zach coming out of the woodwork. I watched so many blockbusters over this, this past summer. I needed something different. And our first film surely is something different. 2016's Raw. It's, it's about a girl who goes to veterinarian school for a freshman year and they have a hazing ritual there. A lot of wacky things happen. I think they get like a bunch of horses blood thrown all over them. That's kind of disgusting, right? They also make every one of the freshmen eat a rabbit's kidneys. That's not too bad, right? It's a little, it's a little quirky. The, the problem is the main character of the film is also a vegetarian and she has been her entire life. So this first time that she eats some meat, something goes on biologically and she decides she wants some more meat, like this raw chicken or her sister's finger. I can't lie and say it didn't have me squirming a little bit. It is spooky season. So if you're looking for a, a nice little indie art house horror film, uh, raw, raw will do the trick. Next up, we have a film anthology called Tokyo from three individual directors, two of which I like a good bit. Michelle Gondry worked on Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Great director. We also got Bong Joon-ho who did Parasite, loved Parasite, need to check out his other films. And last but not least is Leos Kara, who I haven't seen a film from yet, but I have been hearing a lot of good things about Annette starring Adam Driver. Seems to be uh, right out of my wheelhouse. So I'll hopefully be checking that out soon. But this film anthology has three individual stories set in Tokyo and unfortunately Tokyo is kind of just the backdrop of it. Doesn't really play too much of a big part in the stories themselves, but if you're looking for some weird and wacky stories. Boy, do I have one for you. I don't want to spoil these because I do recommend checking it out, but I will tell you the first of the three short films sees a woman turn into a chair. It can't get much weirder than that. It, it does, kind of does. The last two shorts are also pretty weird, but that first one, uh, <laughs> it caught me off guard. Next on our art house film extravaganza, it's a classic, 1995's Friday. <laughs> Now hear me out, hear me out. Friday Go Hard. It is a classic comedy for a reason. Lots of good jokes, lots of funny moments. I think what's really funny to me is that this story is kind of like the Odyssey set in the hood. Our main characters are constantly struggling to get through one situation after another, only for the last bit of the movie to have this very serious gut punching moment where <laughs> Ice Cube brings out a gun and his father's like, boy, what are you doing with that gun? This is what makes you a man. When I was growing up, this was all the protection we needed. And it's played completely serious, no jokes. It takes me out of the film, sure, but it's really funny. Last but not least on our movies of the week, I did watch the new 2021 Marvel movie, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. This new Marvel movie, pretty good. It's not amazing. It's not my favorite Marvel movie. That still goes to Infinity War, obviously, but it's really good. I love the connections to Chinese culture that this movie does. I love the action scenes. I'm not much of an action guy, but man, that entire bus scene freaking blew my mind. Maybe it didn't blow my mind, but it went hard. I'm shocked that I went into another Marvel movie excited. I've been on a little bit of a superhero fatigue for like three years now and Black Widow, I didn't do it for me. That movie was boring as sin. The most recent Marvel Disney Plus shows I mixed on. I liked Loki, especially that finale, but then I also did not like Falcon and the Winter Soldier at all. And WandaVision was kind of mid. So to go into Shang-Chi and enjoy it was a surprise and I'm pretty happy with it. Also, I'm going to see Venom 2 tomorrow. Very excited to see Venom 2 in theaters nonetheless. I'm gonna have a heck of a time. Anyways, let's go into our TV shows. 
Speaking of big blockbuster franchises that don't really need anything else in their franchise, I watched Star Wars Visions. I didn't love it. I definitely think that the potential far outweighed the execution, but I am gonna be making a video ranking all of the shorts from Star Wars Visions. Glad they did this, hope to see more things like this. I gotta remember, there's like a, uh, there's like a, like a South Korean drama. It's like really popular right now and everybody's, everybody's talking about, what, what, what was it called? Squid Game. <laughs> I watched Squid Game. It was fantastic. I'm not the biggest fan of the ending. I feel like the ending could have been handled a little bit better, but I will say episode six, I believe the marbles episode, bro, bro, it went hard. Not only is it a really interesting take on the battle royale genre, but the character moments, the character writing especially is what made me continue watching to the end. Also, one of the games in this show, is just Fall Guys. Let's move on to video games. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm playing a lot of different games right now for different videos. Got back into Portal recently. Been trying 100% those achievements. Did a run in less than an hour. Am I a speedrunner now? Probably not. I also started playing Call of Duty 2003 for the second time. Cause I wanted to do a video on it, but I forgot what I was gonna talk about. So I'm replaying that. I've also been playing The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. You know, that came out on the Switch a couple of months ago. Been trying to work my way through that. Lots of opinions. We'll get a video at some point in Fall Guys. I've been playing a lot of Fall Guys with my friends. And um, again, video, video coming on that one for sure, but it is taking a minute. Let me talk about the, the main game that I played this past week though. That is 2013's, now, now released on Steam, uh, Cookie Clicker. I spent more time playing Cookie Clicker. This is the third time that I've spent more than a few days playing Cookie Clicker. I've gotten most achievements, did the exact same thing I did this time as I did last time, where I got pretty, pretty far, and then I was gonna have to wait like a few days. I might cheated. I opened up the developer tools and I dropped in some cookies and uh, I probably won't be 100%ing that on Steam, unfortunately. I got really close, but I, <laughs> I got bored. Here's the thing. Cookie Clicker is a game that I will always hold dear to my heart. I'm in awe at just how much stuff has been added to this game over the years, from seasons to the ever popular grandma apocalypse. I love the upgrades. I love the Ascension ladder. It's a crazy game to explain and I probably will never do a full video on Cookie Clicker alone. I wanted to mention it in a video because I do like this game and uh, it's pretty pretty cool that it's on Steam now. It's only $5. So go check out Cookie Clicker, I guess. That's something you're into. But let's talk about books. Last time I made a video where I talked about books and guess what? I'm still reading books and none of these books are finished. So I'll just briefly mention what I'm reading. I am reading Joseph Conrad's Heart of Darkness, a book that I was supposed to read in high school. I read most of it. I didn't finish it because it was boring. It's still boring. It's only a hundred pages and it is taking me forever to get through it. I don't, I don't like it. I'll, I'll just say that right now. If it wasn't for the fact that I wanted to read it all the way through to get an opinion for it, I would have stopped reading it already. I'm also reading Stephen King's Carrie my first Stephen King book, and I'm about halfway through with it. And it's pretty good. Like, I'm not blowing my mind or anything. It's nothing amazing. One of the more interesting things about this book is we do have throughout the narrative, these kind of interspersed like newspaper clippings or journal articles or excerpts from letters and books. And that makes it almost like a found footage type book. And it really develops the world a good bit. But for a first Stephen King book, it's pretty cool. I definitely want to read more from him. I've been getting these rainbow covers. I got some over here too. Hopefully I'll have all of them at some point, but I wanna read more of them, watch the movie adaptations, talk about them, lots of interesting stuff there. But finally, the last book I am <laughs> barely knee deep in. So it'll be a while before I talk about the full thing. Uh, it's Dune, Frank Herbert's Dune. I got this collection I got from Barnes and Noble. Pretty cool, interesting cover. I am like three chapters in, but I'm interested. I was kind of afraid this is gonna be a dense read and it might still be, I'm not far into it at all, but I am very interested by the kind of philosophical questions that we're getting asked. We got like some politics, we got like some science stuff, but it's 
so far pretty easy to understand what's happening. There's nothing, nothing too complex yet. So I'm hoping that I'll like this because I will be going and seeing the film, the brand new Denis Villeneuve film in theaters. I wanna go see it in IMAX and hope that I like it because I watched the David Lynch film a few months ago. I did not like that movie. Last but not least, I gotta talk about some music. I've been on a music kick lately, trying to find a lot of new artists, a lot of indie stuff. Obviously, I gotta talk about the uh, the new Billie Eilish album, Happier Than Ever. This album, freaking slaps. I love the lyricism on this one, right? The first song, Growing Older, it has like some of the best lyrics that I've ever related to in a song. I love the production on Oxytocin. It gets my heart racing. I love the psychedelic nature of Not My Responsibility and Overheated. The, the, the powerful vocals from Billy on Everybody Dies just... Ooh. Hits me right in the heart. It's a much lighter album than her 2019 album, but still has a lot of really great lyricism, fantastic production, and it's just a fun listen. I have listened to Kanye West's Donda. I've also listened to Drake's... Uh, What's the name of that album? Who cares? They're both bad. I do not recommend them. I probably like Donda a little bit more, even though I gave it a lower score because it's more interesting. But the new Drake album is more listenable, I guess. No real highlights on the Drake album, but I do like Moon off of Kanye. That song goes places that I quite appreciate. Well, this was quirky. My camera died, but I did want to briefly talk about Phoebe Bridger's 2020 album, Punisher. I freaking adore it. I cannot stop listening to it. Very similar to the Billie Eilish record, but um, I think I like this one more. It's just a beautiful record. Go check it out if you haven't already. But that's all the time we have left for today. If you liked the video, go ahead and give me a like. If you didn't like it, you can dislike. But let me know down in the comments what have you been checking out this week, whether it's movies or TV shows, games or music or books or comics, anime. I don't care. I'm interested in it all. I'd love to hear what you've been checking out. We're also almost at a thousand subscribers. So hit that subscribe button if you want to see us get to a thousand. That'd be kind of cool. More videos on the way. Now we'll catch you in the next one. Goodbye.